Holy Communion, the Eucharist. If we even consider just the titles of these mysteries of our faith, we will realize how sacred they are. For something to be holy means it belongs to God. It's his property. It's all his. And that word communion means us joining with God physically, not just spiritually, but physically, because that's God's greatest desire to physically join himself to our bodies and then our souls. So when we receive Holy Communion, we should be very much aware of this. And the word Eucharist, that we receive it with intense thanksgiving and gratitude for Jesus' death on the cross, since that saves us from hell. And when we receive the Eucharist, we're receiving the fruits of that victory. In today's purgatory story, we will see what happens when we don't give it the reverence due to it. To tepidity is allied negligence in the preparation for the Eucharistic banquet. If the church unceasingly calls her children to the holy table, if she desires that they communicate frequently, she always intends that they should do so with that fervor and piety which so great a mystery demands. All voluntary neglect in so holy an action is an offense to the sanctity of Jesus Christ, an offense which must be repaired by a just expiation. Venerable Louis of Blois, in his Miroir Spirituel, speaks of a great servant of God who learned in a supernatural manner how severely these faults are punished in the other life. He received a visit from a soul in purgatory, imploring his aid in the name of the friendship by which they had formerly been united. She endured the sad, the said horrible torments for the negligence which she had prepared for the Holy Communion during the days of her earthly pilgrimage. She could not be delivered but by a fervent communion which would compensate for her former tepidity. Her friend hastened to gratify her desire, received Holy Communion with great purity of conscience, with all the faith and devotion possible, and then she saw the Holy Soul appear brilliant with an incomparable splendor and rise towards heaven. In the year 1589, in the monastery of St. Mary of the Angels in Florence, died a religious who was much esteemed by her sisters in religion, but who soon appeared to St. Magdalene de Pazzi to implore her assistance in the rigorous purgatory to which she was condemned. The saint was in prayer before the Blessed Sacrament when she perceived the deceased kneeling in the middle of the church in an attitude of profound adoration. She had around her a mantle of flames that seemed to consume her, but a white robe that covered her body protected her in part from the action of the fire. Greatly astonished, Magdalene desired to know what this signified, and she was answered that the soul suffered thus for having had little devotion toward the august sacrament of the altar. Notwithstanding the rules and holy customs of her order, she had communicated but rarely, and then with indifference. It was for this reason divine justice had condemned her to come every day to adore the blessed sacrament, and to submit to the torture of fire at the feet of Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, in reward for her virginal purity, Represented by her white robe, her divine spouse had greatly mitigated her sufferings. Such was a revelation which God made to his servant. She was deeply touched and made every effort to assist the poor soul by all the suffrages in her power. She often related this apparition and made use of it to exhort her spiritual daughters to zeal for Holy Communion. And likewise, we should have zeal for Holy Communion. Three things that we can do to really make our Holy Communions, our reception of Jesus in the Eucharist, much more intense. The first, probably the most obvious, is a simple preparation before Mass for us to really ask the grace to be aware of what we are receiving. The second one, just before we receive Holy Communion, to intensify our emotions and our desire, to realize what a privilege and what an amazing moment this is, and to pray a Hail Mary, asking the Blessed Mother to help us to receive Jesus in the Eucharist. And the last one, an imitation of Padre Pio, who often would thank Jesus for 10 to 15 minutes after receiving communion, that we give due thanks, that we can be like that leper who came back and thanked Jesus for the healing, that we simply sit in a moment and tell Jesus in our own humble and simple ways, because Jesus doesn't want us to give him something that we can't give him, but simply what is already in our hearts to generously offer it to him in simple thanksgiving for what we have just received. And obviously that we offer these communions for our many intentions, but always for the souls in purgatory. My friends, thank you for joining me in today's video. Please support this channel with your prayers and with the many other ways that you can support it. And I will see you in the next purgatory story.